Ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to give you at least 50 tips and tricks to make your survival go easier. Try to keep them as short and simple as possible. Before you start your adventure, decide if you want to keep stamina and temperature on. I enabled it because I wanted the extra difficulty, but in reality it really limits your movement and the temperature differences are more of a nuisance. It doesn't really add that much value to the game. You're just going to have to pay a bit more attention to which charms you equip. Once you rift through your island, don't immediately build your village where you spawn. I know this sounds weird, but just spend a little bit of time looking for the snow biome or desert biome as it's going to help you out a lot later in the game. And it's also significantly going to reduce the amount of traveling you have to do. Finding a snow biome shouldn't be all that difficult. Go to high ground and then start looking around you. If you see large blue mountains, that means there's a snow area and you can just walk over there. Spotting a desert might be a little bit more difficult. Also go to a high area and then you want to look for a direction in which you cannot see any mountains. This is where you want to head towards. There's also a chance you could end up at a shore, but if that happens, then just go to high ground again and repeat this process. Also make use of your map. There's also a different way to do this. Once you have your village square set up and you have villagers dropping by, you can chat to them and sometimes they will give you useful tips as to where you should go. For example, if you're looking for a desert and you're talking to someone about it, they might say, hey, I would head north or I would go south. Unfortunately, this is a bit random. Villagers might also give you different tips on where to find certain items or what to do next in the game if you get stuck, especially the one that you spawn with. In my case, it was Cuddle Team Leader. She guided me through the first part of the game. Once you place down a village square, you can always break this one and relocate it anywhere between the borders of your village. Even when you upgrade this to level 10, which is currently the maximum, you don't need to find all of the resources all over again. Once you place it down, it's going to immediately be level 10 again. You only have 24 inventory slots, which is really not that much. But try to do inventory management as much as you can and build a lot of chests in order to save your stuff in. If you just keep this organized, it's going to make finding stuff so much easier. And especially if you need to craft certain things, you'll immediately know where to get it from later on in the game. As you collect different materials, you'll be able to make a larger chest. But especially in the beginning, the little ones are fine. You can use bats to create a respawn point anywhere on the map. This is especially useful if you're going to fight a brute or if you're going to explore a cave. Basically anything that will put you at the risk of dying. Just make sure that you use a bed beforehand so that if you die you can respawn very close to your backpack and just pick it up again. You can get more hearts by creating different charms and also by eating certain foods but those hearts won't be permanent they'll be temporary. If you really like dark souls you can go through the game with three hearts. It's just gonna make everything so much more difficult so as soon as you can craft charms please go ahead and do so. You can run and crouch in the game and crouching is especially useful for when you want to sneak up the brutes or certain enemies and you want to deal a bit of damage before they start attacking you back. I cannot tell you which button to use because you might be playing on a different platform than I am. So check your settings if you don't know which one this is. You can use brutes to destroy things. The brutes are very aggressive and will charge towards you and that is really convenient because especially if you want to farm flex wood which is dropped from cactuses or if you want to get frostbine which is dropped by the trees inside of the ice biome locate a brood and get them to charge towards you and afterwards loot as many of the items as you can same as with regular fortnite large bushes prevent fall damage i don't know in what type of situation this would be useful but now you know this tip might be greatly underestimated you need to build because it is still fortnite in some way you have stairs you have floors you have walls. Use those to get to locations that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get to. And also if you fall down in a cave and there's no way to get back up, just build some stairs so that you can escape. I panicked the first time it happened to me and then afterwards I was like, oh wait, I could have built my way out of there. If you're in your village or somewhere out in the open, make sure that you put your tools underneath cover. If it's raining, you won't be able to use them. And that is just highly inconvenient, something that can easily be solved if you place them in a dry area. Weapons will have different rarities. You'll start off with common weapons, the gray ones, then you go to uncommon, which is green, then you have rare, the blue ones, and the highest available rarity at the moment is epic. In order to progress through the game, you will need weapons with different rarities, because some objects you cannot break until you have the right one. Now you don't just have different rarities, you also have different weapon types. And sometimes you might have the right rarity, but if you're not using the right type, you still cannot break an object. A basic rule of thumb is that for trees you want to use forest axes, for boulders and collecting gems and metals you want to use a pickaxe, and for bushes you can use a sword. You should really enable visualized sound effects if you're looking for a specific type of enemy. The skeletons and the brutes they make a lot of noise so if you enable visualized sound effects you'll be able to spot them from further away. Even if you can't see them their icon as well as the direction you need to head towards will appear on your screen. You can stay cool in hot temperatures by using snowberries which can be found near a snow biome and if you have a juicer in your village add a bit of milk which you can obtain from cows and you'll be able to make a snowberry shake of which the effect is going to last for 10 minutes. You can also use charms to further increase your hot resistance or the other way around, staying warm in cool areas. You can use the spicy peppers which you can find in the desert area. You will also need charms to further boost your cold resistance 
because just using the peppers is not going to be enough. While we're on the topic anyway, make sure that you keep natural farms intact. So the snowberry bushes, the spicy pepper bushes, but also bushes in which berries grow or the shrubs that have pumpkins. Don't destroy them, just pick up the item that you need. Because if you leave them intact, the item will just regrow after a certain amount of time and you can pick it up again. Mining caves can be a little bit of a challenge. The way I do it is I just go to high ground and then I try to look for something that resembles a turtle shell. All caves have the same outlook. The only thing that's different is their location. Also keep an eye on your map because as you're out exploring, caves will be marked on your map even though you might not have entered them or might not even have seen them. You can use torches or stairs or any build of your choice in order to avoid getting lost in caves. Some of the caves have multiple exits and some just go down really far. So in order not to get lost, I would just start placing down structures every couple of meters from the beginning of the cave. While you're in a cave, you can also choose to build a campfire instead of a torch. Campfires are going to illuminate the place a whole lot more than a torch will. The only downside is that they require a bit more wood. Now, if you do prefer to use a torch, make sure that you use your offhand. I also found this out way too late in the game. But if you go to your inventory, you can move torches, shields, and food items over to your offhand and you can use them simultaneously. The three bosses we currently have in the game are Brutes, Sand Brutes, and Frost Brutes. All the same, but different, but still the same. Once you find one of them, place down a marker somewhere in a safe spot, because even if you eliminate the Brute, they're just going to respawn there after a certain amount of time. And especially for the higher rarity items, you're going to need a lot of Brute skills, so you want to be able to locate them quickly. If you decided to keep stamina enabled, especially when you're swimming, make sure that you jump a lot and you can also jump and attack. This will make sure that you can travel a bit further before you run out of breath. Traveling seems to be the main issue in the game at the moment. Please build a glider as soon as you can. In order to do this, you're going to need a spinning wheel and a loom. And then you need a bunch of wool and a bunch of silk. Wool is obtained from sheep and silk is obtained from spiders. The glider is going to help you out immensely. Especially when you go to the desert area, just use the geysers. You can basically fly around anywhere. You can use an essence table in order to put essences on your weapons, either making them stronger, making them give you more health when you eliminate an enemy, making your luck go up so that enemies drop more loot when you eliminate them. And you can also increase the durability of your weapon. Now durability is another main issue at the moment. There is a way to reset your weapon's durability, but keep in mind that this is most likely not supposed to be in the game and you might risk losing your weapons. So what you want to do is build a wooden chest for which you need six planks, put your weapons in there and then destroy the chest with your bare hands. Your items will return as new, but you didn't fix your durability, you basically reset your weapon so any enhancement that you had on it will be gone. I've seen a lot of comments from people saying that if they use this inside of a cave, they lost their weapons, so use this at your own risk. For me, this has always worked perfectly. You can use villagers to follow you as you're going on an adventure. Talk to them and then say let's explore and they will join you. You can also dismiss them once you've had enough of them. If you find any spare weapons, such as a pickaxe, forest axe or sword, give them to the villager that is following you. Not only do they follow you, they will also help you attack and destroy certain things. And if you give them multiple weapons, they can save all of them and also switch to the right one depending on the situation. If you don't want to get close to an enemy, such as a brute, make yourself a crossbow and then use that crossbow to keep your distance. You can also build up the high ground and then there's just one attack of the brute that might have a chance of hitting you, which is the toxic boulder. Crafting arrows doesn't really require a lot of materials. You can also infinitely farm arrows from enemies. If you either spot a skeleton or a bandit that has a crossbow, build several walls around them and then start dodging them as they're shooting at you. They have infinite ammo so you can pick up as many of them as you would like. You should really snap your builds. And what I mean with that is that whenever you're building something, there's a button that you can press which will automatically put another item either next to it, above it, or below it without you having to manually align it. This will allow you to build larger and complex structures in a faster way. Also, for example, if you're building stairs, when you use the snap tool, you can just walk over them instead of having to jump every single stair. Did you know that the village builds are modular? What I mean with that is whenever you place any structure in your village, once you've finished it, you can just break down a wall and replace it with a different one. Or if you have something that really needs another door, you can remove it. It's extremely useful to create unique stuff like this. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but the game will save every single one of your builds. So if you go inside of a cave, all your structures will still be there the next time. And this applies to the entirety of the map. You can increase your village rating by building stuff, beds, houses, kitchen appliances, literally everything. But if you want to quickly boost your village rating, build as many lumber mills as you want. They only require 8 wood and 15 granite, which is very easy to obtain. And every single one of them that you place will make your rating go up very rapidly. Once you've upgraded your village and you have more villagers living there, give them jobs. You can make them farm resources, you can make them smelt metals, you can make them create textiles. Basically outsource everything that is very grindy so that you can spend your time doing other things. Another interesting thing to know is that villagers can give you items that you haven't unlocked yet. For example, later on in the game you're gonna need a heavy wool thread, but you will not unlock this recipe until you find heavy wool. However, if you get a villager to do a textile creating job, 
there's a high chance that they will end up with the heavy wool thread. And once you take it from them, you'll automatically unlock the recipe for it as well. If you want to get rid of a villager, you cannot just talk to them and tell them to leave. The only way you can get them to leave is by destroying their bed and then making sure that there's no other bed available. Because if you destroy their bed, they're just automatically going to claim a new one. However, if there's nothing available anymore, you can talk to them and they're going to give you a formal notice saying that they will leave within 5 business days unless they get a place to sleep in. They're very civil, those villagers. I like it. Mobs, on the other hand, are not so civil and you should use that to your advantage. You see a lot of mobs, make them destroy each other and then go ahead and finish the rest of them off before you grab the loot. There's no need for you to waste all of your weapons' durability if you can just sit back, relax and watch the show. Unfortunately, there's no way to skip time in LEGO Fortnite, but there is a way to skip the night and to make the rain stop. And you can do this by leaving the game. I usually go in a bed first to create a respawn point and then I just go back out and I go back in. It takes about 20 seconds, but especially if I need daylight for something, I don't want to wait for 5 to 10 minutes until the night is over. So I simply just restart my server. If you see a rainbow on the map, you can walk over there and build towards it. And there you'll find a whole lot of people dancing. If you do an emote with them, they're going to drop you some loot. Sometimes as you're exploring the map, you might see a shiny little butterfly. If you follow this, you'll eventually end up at a llama, which you can then pet. It's going to open up and give you a bunch of goodies. They won't necessarily be great items, but especially in the beginning of the game, this is useful. When you craft weapons in a new rarity, keep in mind that the general rule of thumb is that you create your forest axe prior to your pickaxe. The reason for this is that the materials you need for your pickaxe can only be obtained by using the forest axe in that specific color or rarity, whatever you'd like to call it. For example, if you want to create an epic pickaxe, you will need frostbine, but the only way to obtain frostbine is by using an epic forest axe. If you do not have a weapon of the right rarity, but you manage to get your hands on some flex wood, you can build a dynamic foundation and then push it into objects in order to destroy them. This works really well and once you're done, you can destroy your dynamic foundation and pick up the flex wood again. While we're on the topic of destroying things, you can destroy and move any of your builds, including the village square. Only keep in mind that if you build something in a specific rarity, for example an epic crafting bench or a bed for which you need frostbine, you will not be able to destroy this with any weapon. Most of the objects can be destroyed with your bare hands, also making it go faster. But the example of the frostbine bed, you can only destroy this using an epic weapon. New weapon rarities can be unlocked by upgrading your crafting bench. The first upgrade is quite easy, but when you want to go from uncommon to rare and from rare to epic, you're going to need a whole bunch of materials. I would recommend that you do this sooner in the game rather than later to make the rest of your journey go a lot smoother. Especially in the beginning of the game, when your weapons aren't that great yet, you can use water to kill enemies. Especially brutes, wolves and rollers have a tendency to just just lunge towards you and if you find them near a bunch of water they will go in there and immediately get eliminated allowing you to easily pick up their loot if you're looking for sand rollers but you cannot find them in the desert you can also go to the shore it's a different biome there's not a lot to do there yet maybe we'll get pirates or something in the next update but you can find sand rollers there and it's a shore there's a bunch of water so stand in there make them come towards you and then pick up their loot you can lure animals such as cows, chickens and sheep by using raspberries and pumpkins. At the moment we cannot have a working farm yet because animals are just going to despawn if you capture them, but this might be useful for the future. You should also always pet a sheep, a chicken or a cow before you eliminate them because that way you can obtain wool, you can obtain feathers and milk and afterwards they're also going to give you some pieces of meat. Now if you find any of those things, make sure that you cook them on a grill prior to eating them because if you cook a piece of meat for example it's going to give you so much more resistance to hunger opposed to when you just eat it raw and the cooking also goes really fast if you have difficulty with certain types of enemies use a shield you can put it in your offhand and block most of the attacks that are coming your way think about rollers that are rolling towards you once they hit your shield they'll be started for a little bit and you can just attack them same goes for the other enemies that are trying to turn you into a hashtag unfortunately not all attacks can be blocked especially the ones from the brute However, for the enemies that we have in the game now, you can dodge any attack. And for the ones of us that have played Dark Souls, this should be a piece of cake. The brutes, they might swing, they might stomp, they might do a ground smash, but everything can be dodged. And there we go. That is probably everything I've discovered during my adventure. And it would have been useful to know some of these things before I started on my island. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next one.